Hey, Sleepy Sheepy here. Today we're going to be looking at a build that's a little bit different than my normal builds. This is going to be one that's almost intentionally bad, and it's one that I think From Software doesn't want people to be using or doesn't want to be viable for people. So this is going to include all the different ways that you can apply Blight in PvP. So we're going to be utilizing the Eclipse Shuttle, the Gravel Stone Seal, as well as the Carrion Glintstone Blade, and with those sorceries and incantations we're going to be using Fia's Mist and Death Lightning. So the Eclipse Shuttle as well as Fia's Mist and Death Lightning are the three spells, incantations, and weapons that can apply Blight buildup, and trying to put all three of them into the same build is actually kind of a mess, so we're going to look into why that doesn't work, and then a potential different version of this build where we can make Blight a little bit more effective. Let's first look at why this is a difficult build to set up and run effectively. And that's going to have to do with the level requirements for all the different applications of Death Blight. So the Eclipse Shuttle requires 30 Faith and 25 Dexterity, and the Lightning Death Lightning Incantation requires 47 Faith. So we already have a split between Dex and Faith, but then we need 23 points into Intelligence for Fia's Mist. So just kind of spreading out those stat requirements as well as putting some stats into mind because this is an FP intensive build and then having enough vigor to not die all the time just really brings us up to a decently high level and we're not really min-maxing for any particular skill. In addition to the dexterity, intelligence, and faith-based stats, we're also going to be putting 38 points into strength so that we can utilize the star caller cry ash of war on the star scourge greatsword. And this is going to be nice for creating a huge AoE that pulls enemies closer to each other, and hopefully we'll put them into a spell like Fia's Mist. Another option would be to utilize the Collapsing Star spell, however this is fairly difficult to land on multiple opponents simultaneously, so I opted for the Star Caller Cry. Because this build is already somewhat gimmicky, we're going to be optimizing for fashion over anything else, so we're going to be using Fia's Hood as well as Fia's Robe, and the Traveler Gloves as well as the Snow Witch Skirt. This is going to give us virtually no poise, but honestly it doesn't matter too much. As for our talismans, we're going to be using the Crimson Amber Medallion plus two, Urtree's Favor plus two, and then the Old Lord's Talisman to extend the spell duration, and Radagon's icon just so we can cast a little bit faster. Because it's useful to have our opponents be stationary for as long as possible while in the Death Blight buildup area, we're going to be utilizing Sleep Pots as well as Iron Jar Aromatic, which will allow us to take more hits in the process and hopefully survive long enough to get off some casts. Next, we're going to be looking at the strategy associated with this build. So there are a couple different approaches. The first one is going to involve Fia's Mist and Gravity, so we'll be able to send out this spell and then pull people into the AoE associated with it. So that can be somewhat useful, but I found it to be fairly difficult to land and it's kind of hard to pull everybody in the right direction to get them actually in the AoE of that incantation. So the next one we're going to be looking at is Death Lightning, and I found this to be useful to hopefully be able to apply Iron Jar Aromatic, get everybody to be aggressive around me, and then just hope that kind of that spell will hit people and either do some damage on the hit as well as do some damage uh, or blight build up rather. And what's really nice about that particular incantation is that it does 50 blight build up on the initial hit of the lightning. So if the lightning strikes and you see damage hit, then you're going to be adding quite a bit of build up. And then I think it's also 30 blight per tick, which is a little bit better than Fia's Mist, which is only 20 blight per tick. So between those two spells and incantations, we have a good option there. And then we also have Death Flare, which is going to be the Ash of War for the Eclipse Shuttle. And that's going to be useful if somebody is close to being death blighted, potentially if we're low on FP, and we can just go in and get a couple good quick hits. It's worth noting that the follow-up portion of that particular Ash of War does create an explosion, which does deliver more death blight than any single hit. So if you press L2 once and then press it again, you'll be able to kind of create that explosion and potentially hit your opponent with extra death blight buildup. The strategy that I found most useful in terms of delivering consistent blight buildup was to actually sleep my opponent first, hopefully with a sleep pot, and if that landed, run up to them and quickly use death lightning. So that one was pretty consistent. There is enough time to cast Death Lightning and hit them with the Lightning Strike while they're still in the sleep animation, as long as you can get close to them. So that's going to lead us into our next build, but let's go ahead and take a look at how this build worked first. 
real quick, if you wouldn't mind considering subscribing, I definitely appreciate it. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the invasions with this first build. All right, so jumping into our first invasion, we have kind of best case scenario where we're in a confined space. I have iframes and can just start casting Fia's Mist and Death Lightning. And this proves to be enough to kill the Phantom. And I run out of FP. This was still very early on in this process. So all my swaps and everything were not quite where they needed to be. And I do fall down and kind of hope to roll away from my opponent, but don't really keep an eye on my health and manage to just get clipped and die. So we did get a Phantom with Blight in the process and we had kind of a, a great opportunity there with the iframes and the confined space, but we didn't really get to showcase the full build. And this in next invasion is gonna be slightly better. So here I'm doing the Fia's Mistcast as well as the Starcaller Cry Ash of War to really pull my opponents into that Fia's Mist AOE. And we can see here I'm doing a little bit better of a job of keeping an eye on my FP and just try to keep that as full as possible. And I think at a certain point my opponents really started to understand what my game plan was and they weren't really buying it. And it's also unclear, you know, how much Death Blight actually gets delivered after each one of those kind of Fia's Mist gravity pull moments where they are in the Death Blight buildup area for a period of time, but it's not a super long period of time. So I wouldn't necessarily say things are going super well here. I'm getting hit by different Ashes of War, which is going to be super common, especially at level 174, where you know everybody has access to most of the endgame weapons, and most of those endgame weapons have large AoEs associated with them. But I felt like I was doing okay, and then a blue shows up. So that does allow me to go for some like turn and burns with Fia's Mist, and potentially get a little bit more Blight buildup. But at this point, I'm kind of running for my life because the blue has dual Vike Spears, and if I get Madness build up, I'll lose my FP, and I'm also just taking a fair amount of damage. So I kind of try to be a little bit slippery, you know, hop through these windows and just use the terrain to my advantage, hope that some of the PvE will kind of get in the way. And on my way out here, I do deliver some uh, Blight build up to the blue, but then manage to get hit by the dual Vike Spears and just uh, kind of yeet it off the edge of a cliff. So. That one I thought was going fairly well, but was, you know, somewhat typical of what you can expect with this build where, you know, you might gradually be working on the Blight buildup, then, you know, a blue shows up and you're also getting hit with Ashes of War and it's just not successful for a myriad of reasons where, you know, your HP is constantly taking hits and, you know, you're just kind of hoping that your Blight delivery is fast enough. So this next one I thought was a little bit more fun. I used Iron Jar Aromatic and was having some success with the Blight buildup. I, you know, landed the Death Lightning a few times and switched over to Fia's Miss and also landed that a few times. And then, naturally, we had the, uh, the quit out just because things weren't working out so well. So it's worth mentioning here that a lot of people might quit out when they see Blight buildup. However, Blight buildup doesn't actually take away your runes like Blight in previous Souls games. So if you are, you know, kind of quitting out because you see people using Blight, it's not going to affect your ability to pick up your runes. Obviously, you might quit out because you don't want to die, but I think uh, a common misconception associated with Blight is that it will take away your runes, and you can kind of practice this in PvE if you want just to test it. That's something I did, and then I also talked to some fellow content creators who did confirm that even if you die in invasions due to Blight buildup, you will have the ability to pick your runes back up. So... Uh, moving on to this next one, we do have kind of a 2v1 situation, and I'm keeping an eye on the, the Phantom here. I'm not super concerned if my Death Lightning kills them in the process, because if I can get it to a one-on-one, -on -one, that will, you know, make delivering Blight a little bit easier. So I'm, you know, sticking to the Death Blight kind of variety of incantation spells and weapons, but... I'm not actually trying to avoid killing the Phantom like I would be with the host where I actually want to get Death Blight as the only way for them to die. So that is something worth noting that everything on this build is at plus zero. So I, I'm not actually trying to hit people for HP. However, the Death Lightning incantation does do a significant amount of damage despite having an unleveled seal. So. That's just worth noting and something you should be aware of is that you may actually deliver a decent amount of damage with that if you were to run this build. However, I don't really recommend it. It's uh, much more of a meme or kind of gimmick than something that's actually viable or a way that you're going to consistently win invasions. But it is, you know, fun to mess around with some of the weirder features that you encounter within the context of a From Software game. So 
At this point, I'm not totally sure what happened to the Phantom, but I think PvE killed them, so I'm really able to just kind of focus on the host here. And I'm going for Sleep Pots, I'm also going for Death Lightning, and I'm also trying to keep an eye on where their health is at so I don't kill them accidentally with Death, li death Lightning rather than the Blight buildup. So there I do get a Sleep on the host, and I do think they stayed in the AoE for Death Lightning for a little while, but I wasn't able to actually land Death Lightning. And that's something worth noting is that there's some randomness associated with where the lightning strikes. And you can be locked onto your opponent and, you know, land lightning while they're in the sleep animation and it won't necessarily connect. So they'll probably still end up in the AoE for it, but you won't be guaranteed to get hit by that 50 blight buildup lightning strike that really is useful. So at this point, I kind of switch tactics. I know that they've gotten somewhat blighted, so it's not a bad time to use the Eclipse Shuttle. And they're pretty aggressive with their katanas, so I'm hoping to kind of use that to my advantage. I cast a quick Fia's Mist and hope to pull my opponent into it, and it might, you know, at least deliver a little bit of blight buildup. You're also kind of fighting the clock here, because every second that you're not delivering more blight buildup is the second that their blight meter is decreasing. So it's really like a, a challenging build to use, and, you know, winning anything with it, I, I definitely felt like was an achievement, but it's, it, it's pretty difficult. So at this point, I'm, I think, out of health, uh, or heals, rather, and... Are, and pretty low on FP, so things are not in a great spot, but my opponent is being aggressive and just not really running um, away from the Blight buildup. So I'm able to kind of utilize just kind of spacing and take advantage of their aggression to kind of pull them towards any uh, Fia's Mist clouds that I'm creating. And at this point, I, I think I'm actually out of heal, so I know I said that earlier, um, and I'm pretty low on FP. And I do actually manage here to just land a couple quick hits and win some trades, and that's enough to deliver the Blight buildup. So had I been a little bit slower or had less FP, I think I would have lost that invasion. Like, I, you know, I lost so many in the process of this. And that opponent was kind of the ideal opponent. So this next one is a 2v1. However, we have a Phantom that's not really being a huge factor in this. And early on, I was kind of able to assess that the opponent that I'm playing here doesn't really understand what I'm trying to do. So that was one of the best ways that I was able to have success with this build is for somebody to not know what I was doing and just kind of ignore the death blight buildup. So, I mean, there are so many reasons why this build is bad, but one of them is that you can completely counter it by just using a Ballas anytime you kind of get a high death blight buildup. And another one is that if you just kind of play passively, I might be able to pull you in with gravity, but like I'm never going to be able to actually get you fully blighted. So there are tons of ways to be successful against this build, and I don't think that From Software ever had any intention of making blight even somewhat viable in the context of PvP, which is really the only context to use it in because blight is not effective on PvE unless it's like a invader type character. So. You know, it, I feel like the amount of effort that goes into a kill with Blight is, I mean, it, it's fun, but it, it maybe is a little bit too much. I, I do feel like uh, Blight should be something that's easier to use at higher levels. And that's another facet of this is that Fia's Mist can be used at lower levels when your opponents don't have any bolluses or anything, but I'm not really in the habit of twinking too much, and I feel like that's kind of uh, a cop-out, I guess, a little bit. So, I mean, maybe any Blight build is kind of a cop-out, but it, it's just... Um, I, I didn't want to make a build where I, I just kind of, you know, was killing low-level players because they have very low Blight build-up meters. I kind of wanted to show, you know, maybe the intended version of a Blight build most of the blight related things in this game are late game you know you don't get the eclipse shuttle until castle soul so i felt like this was kind of giving this uh, a try in the way that from software may have intended i mean it's hard to always speculate on what developers actually intend but it is pretty clear that it, i don't think they intended blight to be a meaningful status proc and you can tell just from how effective pretty much every other status proc in the game is that Blight is the kind of outlier in terms of effectiveness and ability to kind of build it up quickly using the different tools available within the context of the game. So jumping back to our invasion here, we really are taking advantage of the fact that this player is ignoring the Blight buildup and that the Phantom is 
not doing a good job of just you know applying pressure within the context of this fight they're not really taking out too much of my hp and eventually we do finally get that kill all right so i'm gonna be honest here when i recorded the intro for this video it was before i'd actually run this second build and to my great displeasure this build is actually potentially worse than the first one at delivering blight build up so the kind of big braid plan that i had going into this was i'll use like the jungle hybrid build that g9 uses which is sleep on the Ripple Crescent Halberd, which scales with Arcane, so you get extra sleep buildup, and then once my opponent is slept, I can combo that into Death Lightning, which does combo as long as you're quick enough and have the right amount of stamina. And then after that, we can go over to the Eclipse Shuttle, use Death Flare to buff it, and then just kind of deliver the rest of the Blight buildup. So that was kind of the plan that I had for this second build. However, it kind of failed, you know, worse than the first one. And my kind of end conclusion was that if you want to deliver Blight, the Eclipse Shuttle is just the best way to do it. The Ash of War and the follow-up, specifically the follow-up, does close to twice the amount of Death Blight buildup as Death Lightning. And Death Lightning is going to be the incantation that does the most Death Blight buildup. So it's, you know, faster at delivering Blight than Fia's Mist. So really it's just the Eclipse Shuttle is better, more consistent. And I really wanted to have fun with this. I really wanted to make this work, but it didn't really work out so well. I still have some invasions with this build and I'll provide the stats here in just a moment. But overall, it really wasn't as successful as I hoped it would be. So the stats for this build are similar to the first one. However, we're cutting out any intelligence that we needed, pumping arcane a little bit higher, and then utilizing just the base stat requirements for both Death Lightning as well as the Eclipse Shuttle. So that gives us 60 Vigor, 26 Mind, 27 Endurance, 14 Strength, 25 Dexterity, 47 Faith, and 40 or 53 Arcane. And that's going to be boosted with the Silver Tier Mask. So the uh, you know the Poise and the Vigor are definitely boosted. We have a decent amount of HP, 21. 100 is, is going to be pretty solid, and then we also have Radagon's Icon just to boost the casting speed for that Lightning, but honestly, it, it just is very difficult to deliver Blight and to actually win invasions with that being your only method to kill your opponents. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the invasions that actually were successful with this build, and we'll talk more about how they worked and how they didn't work. This next invasion is going to be a decent showcase of utilizing the sleep buildup associated with the Ripple Crescent Halberd, and then some sleep pots and death lightning in the process. So we do have a player that's all by themselves. I'm not sure if they had a phantom at one time, but they certainly didn't come into the picture throughout the course of this invasion. And so there you do see a moment where death lightning does get uh, kind of a miss within the context of this invasion. So I go for that while they're slept and still don't manage to get any of the strikes to hit them. So there is some random associated with it as I mentioned and that was kind of an example of where it didn't really work out so uh, I'm kind of running from square one here so I, I went for maybe an unnecessary application of Spirific Priest I probably could have backed off more but I wasn't too concerned about the damage output from this player and kind of their passiveness and my ability to roll catch them was pretty solid so that was kind of putting me in a good spot to at least get Death Lightning to land. And there you can see I do land it and it one-shots them. So they, they are maybe not entirely one-shots them, but it does enough damage to kill them almost instantly. So that was one aspect of this build that could be a little bit difficult. It w did have the potential to kill your opponents fairly quickly. So next up we have a 2v1. And here I'm going for the Phantom, trying to apply you know, the sleep buildup and then get the Death Blight uh, with the... Um, death lightning incantation and the host kind of comes out of nowhere with moon veil so i'm in kind of a difficult spot at this point i don't think i can take on moon veil and a additional phantom so i'm not too worried if i kill the phantom with death lightning it you know does a decent amount of damage and it's kind of my only way to get uh, a kill within the context of the the build that i'm running and the rules that i've kind of set up for myself so there i am able to get the 
death lightning kill on the phantom which puts me in a better spot to kind of get the sleep build up on the host and hopefully deliver blight in the process so i'm doing a good job of roll catching my opponent and they are in a pretty good spot to get hit by death lightning and they just roll off a cliff so um you know that was one of the more successful invasions that i had and it still didn't work out in the way that i hoped it would so this next one was kind of amazing i'm able to use iron jar aromatic and you'll note that i crafted them early on in this invasion because i thought it would be good and this player is up against a fog wall and then they're trying to hit me with a katana and it's just bouncing off because i'm using iron jar aromatic and then fortunately they go for a heal here which allows me to land the death blight build up with death flare on the eclipse shuttle so that was pretty nice i didn't include the aspect of sleep that i wanted to with that build but it was really just a moment where i kind of saw an opportunity and took it and next up we have a multi-opponent invasion again and here i do a pretty good job of landing death lightning I don't have the kind of sleep grease on the halberd that I wanted to get off initially because there wasn't really time and I thought it would be more prudent to go for death lightning and, you know as early as possible get that death blight build up going just you know initially very quickly so there I'm able to land a, a quick hit with the eclipse shuttle and you can kind of just count how many times I do need to hit this opponent with the eclipse shuttle before they get blighted so you know I've hit them a couple times with death lightning I've landed a couple hits with the eclipse shuttle and here I'm in a great spot to kind of deliver a decent amount of build up where they're isolated from the host and the host isn't playing aggressively enough and here I, I get a couple more quick hits in with the eclipse shuttle managed to do some roll catching and pve's kind of getting in the way and you know if this wasn't a plus zero weapon i definitely would have killed them just from regular hits and then here fortunately they become aggressive right when i go for the follow-up with the eclipse shuttle on the ash of war and that is enough to get the blight build up kill so you really do have to work pretty hard at this level to effectively use blight and manage to get a kill and you also need some you know, lack of skill or lack of awareness associated with the other players in the game. So this I was hoping was going to be, you know, a two death blight kill invasion. Things were really working out well where this phantom or this host rather wasn't doing a great job of kind of taking into account the amount of death blight that was coming their way. I was able to cast death lightning a whole bunch of times and just really get them to stay in the AOE associated with it. So, you know, many ticks of death blight are contributing to their blight meter. And I do accidentally fall off the side of this roof here and have to climb back up the stairs. And this was close to my downfall for this invasion. So, you know, I restore my FP, try to get myself in a good spot. I know that they have a decent amount of blight buildup and then they go for rivers of blood and manage to fall off the edge and they don't land on the platform below. They just die. So that one was rough. I thought I would be at a pretty good spot to deliver blight buildup on both players. And sadly, it didn't work out that way. So next up we have just a one-on-one -on -one. this one i feel like i'm in a pretty good spot i'm going for just the eclipse shuttle immediately and we'll kind of incorporate death flare as i see fit throughout the course of this and i managed to get kind of a far range on that lightning strike so there is a little bit more range than you might initially expect and we do get a quick quit out so you know things were going well but um people don't like death blight build up so next up we have a 2v1 and this is going to be a pretty solid spawn, you know, it's the same spawn from earlier and <laughs> we just, you know, get an immediate kill with the death lightning because it does a decent amount of damage. So obviously something that we do need to worry about, but we have hit the host once with it, which is pretty good. And we're in a decent spot to just kind of utilize the pressure associated with the eclipse shuttle and the stun locking to really you know deliver a decent amount of blight buildup i do go for a sleep pot there and it does manage to catch them in the aoe so i'm able to deliver just two or three more quick hits and that's kind of the ideal situation where you have a host that's close to your level and you just deliver a ton of blight buildup very very quickly and as long as they're not allowed to you know kind of get that blight meter to go down at all you're going to be in a good spot so this next one kind of started off rough for this host and this was like the ideal host we have somebody with radon helm they're fat rolling they're alone it's just like they don't really have a great opportunity to avoid the blight buildup and here they start to run away uh but they're not <laughs> i'm not sure if they're in their menu or what but they like run into a wall for a second so you know this is the type of player that you can be effective with blight and that just kind of really goes to show how bad blight is because if these are the type of invasions that you're looking for you're just 
you know, going to find very few and far between, and you're also maybe going to feel a little bit bad about it, because this is clearly a new player. They're not PvP optimized at all. I'm not sure if they were taunting or what, why they were alone, but it, it just kind of felt cruel to utilize this build on them. I mean, it was like the best opportunity within the context of the second build to kind of showcase what I was going for, but I don't know. It, it was just... It wasn't one that I felt particularly good about. It wasn't like a great uh, demonstration of skill. It was just kind of like, yes, this is what you're hoping for when you're invading with this particular build. And it's, you know, not an invasion you can feel great about. So I'm able to consistently deliver Blight buildup and deliver Sleep. And, you know, those are the two things I was kind of aiming to do with in the context of this build. And I'm, you know, rebuffing my uh, Eclipse Shuttle just because I, I'm pretty sure they're close. And if I can just land a couple more light attacks, I'll be in business. And there I am able to kind of land the, the final blow. As always, if you made it this far, I just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody kind of sticking it with me on this journey through this particular build. This was something that came out of recommendations from an earlier Blight video that I did that only featured the Eclipse Shuttle. So trying to use only Blight to win and just kind of use the full gamut of Blight-based weapons and incantations and spells was something that I had on my mind that I wanted to try for a while. So that said, if you do have any build recommendations that you'd like to see, I'd definitely be happy Happy to give them a try if they're fun or interesting even if they're bad you know i'll still give it a try and maybe make video more similar to this but if they're good you know that also helps so yeah uh, i hope you enjoyed this and that's all i've got so have a good one